What's going on, guys? Sumi here with ThoughtCast, and today I'm going to be telling you why guys need to talk about their feelings more. A lot of times we have this idea in society, this narrative that guys can't be emotional. Guys can't share their feelings. Guys can't talk about their feelings because if they do, they're considered unmanly. They're unmasculine if they decide to talk about their feelings, cry, be upset about something. And this still holds true today. And I'm not here saying that you should be a guy that's running around emotionally and being upset about every single thing because that is also not what you need to be doing. But the number one thing that I think guys don't do is talk to their guy friends about their problems. Let me elaborate a little bit here. A lot of guys don't have a good social circle that's welcoming, that's accepting, that has normalized the idea of, hey, you can talk about your feelings here. We're all guys. We can communicate with one another. Instead, you have guys that talk about their feelings with everyone else but their male counterparts. And that becomes a very toxic thing because, number one, when you start talking about your feelings with people that aren't in your tribe, in your group, in your, in your squad, you're allowing strangers to get access to information that may be private, that may indicate some level of vulnerability towards you, and that's not always a good thing. See, I don't advise any guy to go outside of his safety network, his core group of people, and start venting about his situations with his job, his marriage, because that is taking something that's very private and near and over-expressing to someone that may or may not have an interest to protect those secrets. So first and foremost, what does this mean? This means that as a guy, you need to have a core group of people that have your back. You need to have a good social circle. This is what people fail miserably to do, especially in our generation. We think we have friends because we have followers. We think we have friends because we hang out with certain individuals. We think we have friends because there's people that we kick it with, but they don't really have our best interest in heart. You need to find real people that have your back. And this can be difficult, but the best way to do this is to number one, increase your value as a man. Lifting, working out, diet, health, exercise, reading, and genuinely just being a valuable person in the career aspect as well is going to allow you to attract high quality individuals in your life. When you attract these high quality people in your life, you can learn to integrate with them because number one thing I'll tell you about high quality individuals is that when they get around one another, they become better. Iron sharpens iron. I know so many multi-millionaires, successful people, grounded people, really stable people emotionally, mentally, physically that actually room with other guys. They spend a lot of time with other men and this is such a powerful thing that men don't typically do today. We are meant to be in a tribe. We're meant to be in a group. Human beings are social creatures that rely on the hunter-gatherer mentalities, and hunters need to stick with other hunters. And in today's modern translation, you need to be surrounding yourself with high-quality guys that present a high level of masculine energy. And this masculine energy is what will allow you to communicate your emotions and feelings. See, we get it twisted. We think that guys are supposed to be very strong and stand side by side and not talk about their feelings. That's completely wrong. You need to be talking about your feelings with the people that are in your squad, the people that are in your group. It's masculine to express your feelings to people that you trust in your core group of guys. That is something that needs to be done. A lot of times I see guys vent their problems to their girlfriend, to their wife. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times I see guys vent their problems, vent their emotions to their girlfriend and their wife. I'm not someone that discourages this very heavily, but I recommend exercising extreme caution when you do this. The problem is when you express your problems to your girlfriend, she can often mistake your problems and your vulnerability as weakness. And that's where she starts to lose value in the relationship in itself and you become unattractive. There are so many women I've talked to and say they've gotten the ick when they've seen their boyfriend cry, when they've seen their husband get emotional about a problem. Because indirectly, when a man is emotional or sad or not positive about a situation, it demonstrates a vulnerability in the relationship itself, and it demonstrates an unstable foundation for the relationship in itself. Because a woman that lives in her feminine energy, which is a very, very good thing to do, will require a man to lead. And when that leader is expressing doubts about the entire condition, that can become a very toxic thing. That can become an unstable environment. That could be a dangerous situation for the woman to really express herself into. So the number one reaction a woman has is to leave that situation. Women are attracted to mentally tough, strong, disciplined men. This is what they consider as masculine. It's not necessarily having a lot of muscles or tattoos or blood all over your face. It's not the primitive mindset that we think that masculinity operates in. It's being confident in who you are. It's being structured. It's being disciplined. It's being someone that actually does what they're going to say and follows up with it. And it's also someone that can be emotional but doesn't allow that motion to overtake him. See, listen to the way that you communicate your problems. If you're saying that, oh, I'm having a miserable time at work, my boss is so mean to me, I don't know what I'm going to do, that comes off as a weakness because there's no hope at the end of it. There's no light at the end of that tunnel. Instead, say, yeah, my boss is being super mean, but look, once I get this promotion, I'm sure a lot of that will change. My boss is being really, really bad to me today, but you know, maybe he's just having a bad day or maybe I'm taking it too personally. 
See, these are things where you're offering a solution to it. But I'm going to tell you a big difference in this. If you talk like this to your woman, she'll take it in a positive way. But you don't necessarily need to be like this 100% of the time. You can be emotional with your guys. My whole message here is to start being more emotional with your core unit, your core group of males, and surround yourself in positive masculine energy that allows you to express yourself freely. Too many times, guys will overexpress their emotional weaknesses to their woman. They'll start talking about it and venting about it and be sad and be depressed, and that woman can't stabilize and support you in the whole emotional mindset. There's only so much that she can take. If you come home from work every single day and you're upset, you're crying, you're depressed, you're not offering her a way out of that situation or giving her hope that you can get out of it, she's going to leave you. She's going to feel like you're unattractive. She's going to lose faith in the relationship in itself and your ability to provide, protect, and secure. On the flip side, so many of my friends that are guys come to me, hey, I'm having a really bad month. I lost my bonus this month. I'm not doing good this month. And I'll be like, all right, man, let's talk about it. It's okay. I'm here for you. Because the number one thing that I want for them is their success. I can't leave them as a friend because they're not doing well. That's not something that I'm doing. I'm not in a relationship with them in that aspect. I'm always going to want them to do better. When they grow, I grow. We grow. It's very important to understand this. Every single guy that's in my group, I'm trying to get them to the next level. And they're also trying to get me to the next level. So when they bring me their problems, I'm bringing them solutions. When they bring me their weaknesses and vulnerabilities, I'm bringing them my strengths. The things that they're not good at, I'm good at. And the things that I may not be good at and the areas that I might be weak in, they're typically good at. This is what a tribe is. We cover each other's faults. It's like the Spartans. You protect the guy next to you. It's not about protecting yourself. It's about protecting your friends, your group. This is the same thing in business with my partners that I have in business. If they have weaknesses, if they have doubts in the business, I'm lifting them up. Sometimes their doubts may be valid concerns where we're like, you know, we need to pull out of this. This investment isn't good for us. So start talking about your feelings with your guys. Stop thinking that you need to be emotional around women only. You need to start showing your emotions around men that you can trust. Don't just go around being overly emotional all the time. Be emotional with the right people. And let me advise you very carefully. Being overly emotional in any situation is not going to be good. So learn to control that in the first place. But if you have to let go of it, if you have to vent, if you need a shoulder to cry on, start being there for your friends first. Start being that person that they can talk to and start allowing yourself to be open with those individuals as well.